we have put together this new briefing for President Obama and his senior national security team. And the reason we have is because we feel that now that we have all this evidence and documents and also actionable intelligence, that the president can assign a special assistant for this matter and put them on this and find out what is really going on and get control of it before it's too late. And uh, when I provided this information to Bill Clinton, President Clinton and his CIA, I didn't have these documents. I didn't have a lot of the information. We did not have the 550 top secret uh, men and women who have been inside the corporate world dealing with this issue and inside these classified projects that we have today. So Obama has the benefit of that, which his predecessors did not have. So we have put this together in an, an encyclopedic and comprehensive briefing, including an updated version of what I had provided to Congressman Christopher Cox. And this is another document that's up there. Now, this is not a government document, but it was, it was generated at the request of a government official. As you all know, Congressman Cox, who was head of the Securities and Exchange Commission during the meltdown of the late Bush years, but prior to that had been a, a congressman from Orange County, is a Republican from the Orange County area. Uh, I personally briefed him back in 1996, about 14 years ago. And as a result uh, of that meeting, he asked me to put together who and where these specific projects are located. Where are the facilities? What are the names of them? What are the uh, uh, names of the corporations? And which government labs are specifically tied to uh, extraterrestrial research projects, uh, UFO, so-called propulsion systems, and what have you? Because even though he was a, a quite an important member of Congress and and was on some key committees that should have been briefed on this matter, he had never heard of it. He had never had any access. And as a result of that, I put together and then have updated this, uh, this, this uh, document for President Obama. And in it, I go through some of the background, which I've already shared with you, but have also uh, provided uh, in the uh, sort of uh, enclosure of this letter to Congressman Cox the facilities um, and the specific facilities. For example, Edwards Air Force Base, Haystack Butte, China Lakes Naval Facility, George and Norton Air Force Bases, which were decommissioned, uh, the Tabletop Mountain Observatory that NASA runs, is that it deals with this issue, Blackjack Control. Now, these are the Edwards Air Force Base and related facilities. Now, note in the document, we got Blackjack Team. Now, uh, what's interesting is that I had been given this intelligence on blackjack control and had created this document for Congressman Cox before I ever got this top secret NRO document that I just shared with all of you. Think about that. That's corroboration. So we know our intelligence was good. The aerospace facilities, there's the Tihon uh, ranch, Ant Hill, Northrop Ant Hill facility. It's called the Ant Hill. McDonald's Douglas, which is now a Boeing. Of course, they merged the Lano plant, where they build the alien reproduction vehicles. The Lockheed Martin Hellendale plant. The Phillips Labs facility at the North Edwards facilities. These are all associated with the Edwards Air Force uh, base and the related range out in the high desert of California. And then there's the Nellis Complex, which we've gone over. Uh, and then there are the New Mexico facilities, Los Alamos National Laboratories, Kirkland Air Force Base, and specifically Sandia National Laboratories, SNL, and the Defense Nuclear Agency, Phillips Labs again, Monsanto Weapons Storage Facility, Coyote McCanyon Test Site at the north end of the Manzano Range, and the White Sands Complex. And then we go through Arizona, Fort Huachuca, where there's an underground storage facility where there are ET spacecraft and ET bodies that are stored there that are the result of our having used Star Wars weapons to shoot them down. The National Security Agency and Army Intelligence Complex near Fort Huachuca, 
etc. So this document goes through all, and this is now also up on our website for you to see. Um, and then there are others that are mentioned. The Dugway Proving Grounds outside Provo I mentioned uh, is a state-of-the-art facility, mostly run by the Mormon corporate complex uh, out in Utah. It's near, it's near Provo, but it's out in the desert. Interestingly, it, its airspace is classified and there's no roads that go to this particular area of Dugway. And so you have to be in a classified aircraft with classified airspace clearance to even get to it, literally, unless you go underground. Um, and there's also uh, the Redstone uh, Arsenal Complex in Alabama, the Pine Gap Underground Facility in Australia, um, and the Lawrence Livermore Labs, and the Cheyenne Mountain uh, Deep Space Network, as it's called, that has a dedicated console, Console 52, uh, is what it used to be called, that tracks ET spacecraft as they approach the atmosphere. And then there are various other government agencies I list that are involved, the DARPA, DIA, CIA, NRO, et cetera. And then the private corporations that have been involved in this over the years, BDM Corporation, Bechtel, Booz Allen Hamilton, Boeing, EG&G, E-Systems, Lockheed Martin, uh, McDonnell Douglas, which is now part of Boeing, MITRE Corporation, Northrop, uh, Grumman, uh, Phillips Labs, Raytheon, uh, E-Systems, etc. Rockwell, SAIC, TRW, um, Wackenhut, and others. So these are all ones that are listed, um, and uh, then there are a set of, of suggestions and recommendations for action for the congressman. So this is a very, very important document that gives people sort of an overview, and there are other facilities as well. We're, we learn of new facilities and corporations all the time. So those are some of the things I wanted to, to share uh, you, you get a sense of the sort of, uh, and we're, we're just now through two documents that, that are out of the, the, the hundreds that are in this briefing for the president. Um, historically, though, I think there are some very interesting documents that people often overlook. One that I understand was unintentionally declassified that was um, uh, a top secret document from Canada. It's known popularly as the Wilbur Smith Memo. Uh, dated uh, November 21st, 1950. 50. Now, this is uh, 60 years ago now, almost. And this particular memo from the Department of Transport that was top secret um, was a, a communication uh, from this scientist uh, who was looking into uh, the ET issue. And uh, they had been asked about it because the uh, uh, some of the people in the government of Canada had heard that we had acquired one of these so-called back then they were called flying saucers, uh, and in this top secret memo, uh, I, I, we, we make note on the on the second page of it, uh, and and this again is in, in the materials that are now on the website and in the book, but it says uh, a, a, a few very interesting uh, uh, conclusions. A the matter is the most highly classified subject in the United States government, rating higher even than the H-bomb. Now, remember, the H-bomb had not been detonated until 1952, and this was written in 1950. What could be of higher classification than the development of the ultimate doomsday weapon, the hydrogen bomb? This subject was more highly contained and classified. B, flying saucers exist, period. It's just a statement. C, their modus operandi is unknown, but a concentrated effort is being made by a small group headed by Dr. Vannevar Bush. Now, Dr. Vannevar Bush was a man who headed up the Manhattan Project in World War II and later headed up a team of scientists that included Edward Teller and a number of other people to study the ET spacecraft that we have got at the Roswell and other places. Now, this is, an, this is a non-contested document. In other words, there's no, no argument about the legitimacy of this officially released document that slipped through and out of the Canadian classification system. Uh, and then, in D, the entire matter is considered by the United States authorities to be of tremendous significance, period. So that's 60 years ago, my friends. What has gone on since? So that's, that just is something that if you read that, the breathtaking nature of these conclusions from this 
a top secret document from Canada from 60 years ago, and imagine what has transpired in the intervening 60 years. So uh, <laughs> that's what we're talking about. This is the most important story of our lifetimes and really uh, of the history of the human race. Now, another very interesting document, which we acquired, it was in very poor condition, um, was dated the 22nd of March, 1950. And this is a very interesting thing. It's a guy from Guy Hotel, H-O-T-T-E-L, uh, SAC, Strategic Air Command, Washington, at, to the director of the FBI, uh, J. Edgar Hoover. And... Uh, the subject was uh, flying saucers, information concerning. Uh, there's some blackened out material, but it says the following information was furnished to, and it gave some sources, uh, names that had to be blackened out. An investigator for the Air Force stated that three so-called flying saucers had been recovered in New Mexico. They were de uh, described as being circular in shape with raised centers 50 feet in diameter. Each one was occupied by three bodies of human shape, but only three feet tall, dressed in metallic cloth of a very fine texture. Each body was bandaged in a manner similar to the blackout suits used by speed flyers and test pilots. According to Mr. X, it's blackened out, the informant, the saucers were found in New Mexico due to the fact that the government has a very high-powered radar set up in that area and it is believed that the radar interferes with the controlling mechanism of the saucers. No fuller value, blah, 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 blah. And so, now, that last paragraph is what's important. We have learned that, as you know, if you go back to the 20s and 30s, and this was written in 1950, that Tesla and others were doing things with scalar electromagnetic coils and things of this sort. And there were a lot of classified work. As you know, the Philadelphia experiment was in 1942. This is 1950. So there were a lot of advanced electromagnetic studies that had already been done. And this isn't known by the general public, but it's true. Interestingly, we have found out that where these ET craft crashed was near, of course, Roswell. Everybody's heard of the Roswell event. What people don't realize is that that was the only nuclear bomb squadron in the world at the time. It was the only nuclear weapons place on the planet. It was before the Soviets got them, and it was a very high security area. The ETs were extremely worried about our ability to destroy all life on Earth with these weapons of mass destruction. And so they became fully materialized, which you don't see that often now, but they became fully materialized in that area, seeing what we were doing with these weapons, because they were very concerned not only for Earth, but for the fact that we were beginning to go into space and what this might mean for the rest of the, the, the order of the universe. And when they were in the area, they switched on these what looked like radar dome or radar arrays that were actually scalar electromagnetic weapons. And it affected the electronics of these ET spacecraft because they're not jets or rockets. They run on what we've been talking about for years through the orionproject.org and, and our research, and that is very advanced electromagnetic systems. And what happened is that uh, one of these ET spacecraft hit the other, and they went down. Now, this memo says there were three that were downed eventually. Uh, we know that in this one incident there were two, one that went down northwest of Roswell and the other one went down uh, west of there near Socorro, New Mexico. And, uh, of course, and all the rest is history. Now, what's interesting about this is that recently uh, one of the witnesses to this, a military witness, has come forward uh, on a, a, a deposition from uh, he died, and when he died, he, he, his family had arranged to release his testimony about this Roswell event, and he was a military officer at the time, and this is also up on our website. So what I think people have to understand, however, is that you don't go through millions of light years of space or you know, thousands of light years of space and travel faster than the speed of light and get to New Mexico and just have an accidental crash, and it just happens to be right near our only nuclear base that happens to have this new, quote, radar system 
which wasn't radar at all. It was used as an electronic weapon system. This was an early SDI, Star Wars, hit. And so began in 1947 what is now a 63-year organized attempt using classified money uh, without the approval and oversight of the Congress, the international organizations, the president, of a nasty war that's going on where we have targeted ET craft and shot them down. 